Hello, my name is Dor Benamotz and I'm a professor of physical chemistry at Purdue University. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about a perspective article that I've written entitled Unveiling Electron Promiscuity. Now the story has got various aspects to it, but they're all interrelated. And they have to do with simple things, like what happens when you put a little bit of salt into water? Put a tiny bit of salt into water, and we all know that sodium chloride is going to separate it into uh, cation and anion, sodium and chloride. And those anions are going to be hydrated by water molecules. So there are going to be hydrogen bonds between the water and the chloride ion, for example. What's surprising is that it has recently emerged that there is a very high probability that the electron on the chloride ion is actually going to spend its time on the surrounding water molecules. About 20% of the time, the negative ion of the chloride, the electron on the chloride, is going to actually be on the water molecules. So these surrounding water molecules are now negatively charged, not neutral. There's also a connection between this that should become clear in a minute. And what happens when you mix another simple mixture? You take an alkane molecule like hexane and you mix it with water. So we put a tiny bit of hexane here into water. And uh, you start out with this clear solution. But when I mix it, it's kind of like making salad dressing. We all know how to make salad dressing. Mix this up. You get a milky looking solution. If you mix it more vigorously, you can make tiny little droplets that will last for a long time. The amazing thing is that experiments have revealed that if you put an electric field across this kind of solution, the little oil drops migrate towards the anode, indicating that they're negatively charged. They actually have a very substantial amount of negative charge. About one in a hundred of the surface water molecules have a negative charge. That's a huge amount. It's a million times more than the number of anions, the hydroxide ions, that are present in neutral water at pH 7. So the surrounding water has a million times lower concentration of negative charges than the surface of these little oil drops. So where does that negative charge come from? Well, the most obvious answer, almost seemingly the only possible answer, is that it comes from hydroxide ions, because all we've got here is pure water and pure oil. Problem is, what is the driving force that could make the concentration of hydroxide ions increase that much on the surface? The highest level computer simulations that have done on these sorts of mixtures suggest that there is not a huge affinity of the hydroxide ions for the surface, although that's a controversial point, and some people argue that there may be an affinity after all, but it's not clear. But recently, another ex possible explanation for this negative charge has emerged, and that has to do with the same sort of charge transfer I was talking about between water and chloride. Turns out that even two water molecules that are hydrogen bonded actually undergo a little bit of charge transfer. There's a slight, only about 1%, of an electron is transferred from the hydrogen bond acceptor to the hydrogen bond donor. So that in a pair like this, there's a slight negative charge on that water and a slight positive charge on that one. Now in bulk water, that doesn't mean that you're going to have charged water molecules in bulk water because there's a statistically equal number of hydrogen bond donors and acceptors. But at a water surface, the story could be different because there you may have an asymmetry between the number of donors and acceptors. And in fact, we believe that there are more donors than acceptors on a water surface. Both experimental and theoretical evidence suggests that. And so this mechanism of electron transfer might produce a negative charge on the surface. Amazingly enough, the amount of negative charge you might expect due to this mechanism is just about in the right ballpark to explain the negative charge on these oil drops. Now, this is a very controversial subject, and it's certainly not settled yet. But uh, it is an interesting possible mechanism for explaining why these oil drops and water inter oil water interfaces are negatively charged. There's many other aspects to this story, this threaded story of the promiscuous life of electrons in water that is covered in my perspective that I don't have time to uh, go over now. But uh, I'm very pleased to be able to do this, especially in the Journal of Physical Chemistry, which has stayed true to G.N. Lewis's famous pronouncement when he was asked, uh, what is physical chemistry? He said, physical chemistry is anything that's interesting. And I love the Journal of Physical Chemistry because it stayed true to that spirit. And that's particularly true of the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters, the newest member of the family of journals, uh, w whose mission is to publish the coolest and hottest new physical chemistry as fast as possible. And I'm very pleased to have had the opportunity to 
uh, present my perspective in this exciting new journal.